Have you ever wondered why your investment in Snowflake stock hasn't yielded the expected returns? Let's take a trip back to the year 2020. If you had invested $1,000 in Snowflake, then, by March 2024, that investment would be worth just $569. That's a decrease of 43% from your initial investment. Snowflake, a leading data technology company in the United States, has been on the radar of many investors due to its innovative approach to data analysis. Yet, the stock's performance seems to tell a different story. The question then arises, what's causing this conundrum? To find the answer, let's peel back the layers of this icy mystery, starting with Snowflake's revenue. In 2023, Snowflake's revenue was $2.8 billion. Since 2020, the company has seen a compound annual growth rate, or KGR, of 124%. However, the speed of this revenue growth has been tapering off over the years. We also need to consider the composition of Snowflake's revenue. 95% comes from product sales, while the remaining 5% is from professional services and other sources. Geographically, 79% of the revenue comes from the United States, 14% from Europe, the Middle East, and Africa, and the remaining 7% from other regions. Now let's move on to Snowflake's profit margins. The company's gross profit margin in 2023 was 68%, showing an upward trend from the four-year average of 64%. However, the net profit margin for the same year was negative 29%, a stark contrast to the gross profit margin due to significant R&D and SG&A expenses. To understand this, we need to delve into the financial performance of Snowflake over the years. The journey promises to be as fascinating as it is enlightening, so strap in as we navigate the snowstorm of numbers and percentages that make up the Snowflake stock conundrum. One of the key indicators of a successful business is its ability to grow revenue over time. As we delve into the financial terrain of Snowflake, a prominent data technology company, we observe a fascinating journey of revenue growth. Back in 2020, this journey embarked with an impressive growth rate. Fast forward to 2023, and the company boasts a revenue of $2.8 billion. That's a staggering compound annual growth rate of 124% over these years. But as we peel back the layers, a subtle trend emerges. The yearly growth rate, while still commendable, has shown a consistent decrease. Between 2020 and 2021, the growth rate was a whopping 100%. The following year, it dipped to 75%, and by 2023, it had further reduced to 33%. This decelerating growth rate points to a maturing business that may be approaching its saturation point. Snowflake's revenue structure is heavily skewed towards its product, which accounts for 95% of the total, while professional services and other sources contribute the remaining 5%. In terms of geographic distribution, the United States leads the pack with 79%, followed by Europe, the Middle East, and Africa with 14%, while the rest of the world accounts for the remaining 7%. While the revenue growth paints an optimistic picture, the declining growth rate does raise a few eyebrows. Is this a mere speed bump in Snowflake's journey, or does it signify a deeper issue? Is the company facing stiff competition, or are they struggling to innovate and keep their offerings relevant? These are some of the questions that investors need to ponder. While Snowflake's revenue has been growing, the rate of growth has been declining, this trend is not uncommon for companies that have grown rapidly in a short span of time. As the market matures and competition intensifies, maintaining a high growth rate can be challenging. This however doesn't necessarily spell doom for the company. With the right strategies and decisions, Snowflake can navigate these challenges and continue its growth trajectory. Profit margins tell a different story altogether. Diving into Snowflake's financials, we see a complex picture painted by the company's gross profit margin and net profit margin from 2020 to 2023. Snowflake's gross profit margin in 2023 stood at a robust 68%, showing an upward trend from an average of 64% over the past four years. This growth suggests a positive trajectory, with the company successfully capitalizing on its revenue to cover the direct costs of providing its services. However, the net profit margin in 2023 presents a stark contrast, coming in at a negative 29%. This negative figure signifies a less than optimal scenario with the company spending more than it earns. But let's not rush to judgment. This net profit margin shows a significant improvement from a staggering negative 90% in 2020, negative 58% in 2021, and negative 38% in 2022. 
This trend of reduction in losses sparks a glimmer of hope for a better 2024. What's causing this difference between gross profit margin and net profit margin? The answer lies in Snowflake's research and development R&D, and sales, general and administrative SG and A expenses. In 2023, R&D expenses represented a substantial 46% of revenue, a rise from 40% in 2020. On the other hand, SG and A expenses made up 61% of revenue, a decrease from a whopping 108% in 2020. These numbers reveal a tug of war between increasing R&D expenses and decreasing SG and A expenses. The overall trend though is a decrease in these combined expenses from 2020 to 2023 which is the primary driver behind the improved net profit margin. However, the elephant in the room remains Snowflake's rising expenses. Despite the company's efforts to rein in costs, the expenses continue to outpace revenue, leading to a growing net loss. The company's increasing expenses are a significant factor in its declining net profit. Now let's turn our attention to Snowflake's assets, liabilities, and cash flow. Starting off with total assets, they stood at $8.2 billion in 2023, a slight increase from the $7.7 .7 billion in 2022. However, when we look at net assets, there's a decrease from $5.5 billion in 2022 to $5.2 billion in 2023. This leads to a decrease in the equity to total assets ratio from 71% in 2022 to 63% in 2023. Moving on to liabilities, the current ratio, which is a liquidity ratio that measures a company's ability to pay short-term obligations, has decreased from 2.5 in 2022 to 1.85 in 2023. This indicates that the company's short-term liabilities have increased relative to its short-term assets. Additionally, the receivable days, which measures how quickly a company collects payments from its customers, has slightly improved from 122 days in 2022 to 117 days in 2023. This suggests that Snowflake has become slightly more efficient in collecting its receivables. Despite the increase in liabilities and decrease in net assets, there's a silver lining. Snowflake's operating cash flow and free cash flow both stood at a positive $800 million in 2023. This shows a steady growth in cash flow over the years, which is a positive sign. It's interesting to note that this positive cash flow trend is in stark contrast to the negative net profit we discussed earlier. So, what does all this mean? Well, while Snowflake's liabilities are increasing and its net assets are decreasing, its cash flow is showing positive growth. This suggests that despite its financial challenges, Snowflake is generating enough cash to sustain its operations, which is crucial for any business's survival and growth. While the company's liabilities are increasing, its cash flow is showing positive growth. The DuPont analysis provides a comprehensive view of the company's performance. It's a method that breaks down the return on equity. ROE, into three components, net profit margin, asset turnover, and equity multiplier. Let's dive into Snowflake's DuPont analysis for the years 2023 and 2022. In 2023, Snowflake's ROE stood at negative 15%, a figure mirroring the previous year, 2022. The net profit margin, a measure of how well a company converts revenue into profit, was negative 29%. Although negative, it's an improvement from the negative 38% recorded in 2022. Now let's talk about asset turnover, which measures how efficiently a company utilizes its assets to generate sales. In 2023, Snowflake's asset turnover was 0.34, a slight increase from the previous year's figure of 0.27. The final component of the DuPont analysis is the equity multiplier, also known as asset to equity. It provides insight into a company's financial leverage. In 2023, Snowflake's asset to equity was 1.58, compared to 1.4 in 2022. In a nutshell, the DuPont analysis reveals that while Snowflake's ROE remained constant, there were improvements in net profit margin and asset turnover. However, the rise in the equity multiplier indicates that the company has increased its reliance on debt to finance its assets. Despite the challenges, Snowflake's consistent growth in certain areas provides hope for potential future gains. The improvements in net profit margin and asset turnover, for instance, are positive indicators. However, the increased financial leverage necessitates careful monitoring. Stay tuned for more in-depth analyses of your favorite companies. We aim to provide you with the financial insights you need to make informed investment decisions. Remember, investing is not just about following the crowd, 
It's about understanding the numbers and making decisions based on solid financial analysis. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest video updates, and please comment the companies you want analyzed, and we will cover them in our upcoming videos.